Welcome everybody to today's Concordia Live, co-designed and hosted in partnership with our global patron member, the US African Development Foundation. My name is Hannah Delman, I'm the Senior Director of Partnerships and it brings me great pleasure to welcome everyone to today's discussion. For those of you joining us as a guest of either USADF or one of our speakers, Concordia is a New York-based nonprofit dedicated to promoting public-private partnerships and positive social impact through our Convene, Connect, Create model. We're best known for our annual convening, which serves as the preeminent global forum alongside the UN General Assembly each fall, but we have a robust year-round program as well as dedicated team members to support our members in their partnership design, growth, and implementation strategies. We convene for positive social impact. I encourage you to learn more about our programming, membership, and how to join by reaching out to membership at concordia.net or looking over our website. For those of you who joined the 2020 Concordia Annual Summit in its digital existence, um, or any of our regional summits like the Concordia Africa Initiative, you're familiar with the Spot Me platform, but I'd like to share a few tips and tricks to help you navigate today's discussion and maximize it. Listeners are encouraged to use the Q&A feature of Spot Me to ask questions. Towards the end of the session, Melvenia will ask the panelists these questions. For any non-questions, but more so comments, the connect element is central to all we do, especially in this digital era. So I encourage you to use the newsfeed or chat feature on the SpotMe platform to introduce yourself as well as share any relevant work that you're doing related to today's discussion. This will be monitored by the Concordia team members. You can also take the conversation external, tagging at Concordia Summit or any of our speakers over social media. This webinar will be recorded and available on our website during this, along with a summary of today's conversations as well. So if something is exceptionally profound and you can't wait to share it with your teams, don't worry, you can. Today's topic, supporting women entrepreneurs in Africa is a great topic for this week, which of course kicked off with Monday's International Women's Day. It's especially important to me this time last year, I was returning from a trip to Lagos where we spoke about entrepreneurship and we had partnered with an amazing group, SME.ng, and had really great discussions about what is necessary to create that ecosystem in support of female entrepreneurs. So I'm very excited to hear from our panelists today about their lived experiences and what the global community can best be doing to shore up the local talent around the world. So with this discussion, it's, it's particularly important to Concordia, given the importance of public-private partnerships and fostering and sustaining that ecosystem I referenced. We have three fantastic women business owners here to share their experiences and highlight the unique ways that mixed grants and technical training can contribute to an entrepreneurial journey. Our moderator, U.S. African Development Foundation's Melvenia Gay, um, will introduce the topic in full, but I would like to just welcome, on behalf of Concordia, our speakers. We have Cecilia Sawera, Founder and manager, Managing Director of GNC Chemicals, and she's joining us from Zimbabwe. Pamela Kapakale, Founder of Ngaro Solar Services, is with us from Zambia. And Joanna Louise Ngone Mbengu is the Founder of Judy Map in Senegal. We have Manny Pereira Kolechi, who's the Senior Program Director at the Bureau of Educational and Cultural cultural affairs for the US State Department, and he oversees a project that's been instrumental to the entrepreneurial journey of these three women and others. With that, I'm so happy to turn it over to Manny to, to kick off the conversation. Thank you so much, Anne, and really appreciate the opportunity to be here and tell uh, everyone, all our friends and collaborators across the continent and also around the world about the Academy for Women Entrepreneurs from the US Department of State. We created AWE in 2019 to augment the existing slate of projects focused on women's economic empowerment. Um, again, the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs, which you may fami be familiar with, has traditionally focused on exchange programs. So this was a little bit different for us, but AWE or AWE as it's uh, fondly called on the continent provides women entrepreneurs with the skills, resources and networks needed to start and scale successful businesses. Through AWE, women entrepreneurs participate in a facilitated entrepreneurship program supplemented with local content as well as networking and mentorship opportunities. AWE is typically centered around the online training program Dream Builder, a massive open online course developed through our partnership with Arizona State University's Thunderbird for Good uh, in their School of Global Management, as well as the global copper mining company Freeport McMoran. The program equips women with the tools needed to create and grow their own businesses, raise capital, and effectively network with other successful business owners. 
We're really excited to be able to expand our presence in Africa. We started with 10 countries, then grew to 14 in 2020 and are now at 18 countries in 2021. To give you a quick overview of the countries we are represented here today, we have Benin, Botswana, Cote d'Ivoire, Ethiopia, Ghana, Kenya, Liberia, Malawi, Mauritius, Namibia, Nigeria, Rwanda, Senegal, South Africa, Tanzania, Uganda, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. Through our partnership with the U.S. African Development Foundation, they've been instrumental in supporting and investing in all enterprises and small and medium-sized enterprises while responding to the need for development and support of underserved communities. I couldn't be more proud and excited to be joined by my colleague, Melvina, and also some of our great AWE alumni, Cecilia, Johanna, and others that are here joining us today. It's, it's a real pleasure. Um, we'd be excited to share more about AWE and opportunities to get involved, and we'll be happy to answer any questions. Melvina, thank you so much for having me here. It's a pleasure to be here. Over to you. Hi, good morning. My name is Malvina Gay, and I am the External Engagement Specialist for the United States African Development Foundation. I'd like to first extend a warm thank you to Concordia for jointly hosting this and making available a platform to have what I know will be a robust and rich discussion with women entrepreneurs on the African continent. As Manny has already mentioned, the United States African Development Foundation has partnered with the State Department Awe project, and we have decided to provide funding to all graduates who submit applications to the United States African Development Foundation in a grant competition. The United States African Development Foundation, for those of you who are not familiar with us, we are a US agency created by Congress 40 years ago with the express purpose of providing funds grants assistance, operating assistance, as well as expansion assistance to wholly owned, operated, and administered African entities. The African Development Foundation is a very engaged and vital partner of the United States government, whole of government approach to promoting and increasing two-way trade between Africa and the United States, to building capacity and contributing to enabling environments so that African businesses can become viable partners with US companies. We are a part of the Prosper Africa Interagency Consortium. We sit with the Power Africa and we launch every year a competition for women in energy, allowing women in off-grid energy projects to compete for additional funds to carry out their businesses. And most importantly, it is our hope through the Awe program that we address that missing middle. Oftentimes women entrepreneurs may find it a bit more difficult to secure funding either to launch their businesses or to maintain their businesses. And the African Development Foundation has recognized that. And throughout our programs, we provide funding. Last year was our first year as a partner with the Awe program. And we were successful in providing 44 women businesses across 10 African countries to the tune of $880,000. So we are very proud about that. This year, we have expanded our participation to 14 African countries, and we're hoping to provide that similar level of funding so that those select all graduates can indeed have that missing middle addressed. So just to give you some some information. The three panelists that you will hear from today were three contestants in our grant program for our first year. Their projects and their grant applications were without question outstanding, as many of them were. However, we had to select from those that we were given. So today we do have, as Hannah mentioned, Pamela Kapakele, Joanna Mbenge, and Cecilia Sawara, who are three Allway graduates and US ADF awardees of our funds for the missing middle. So I am going to turn the conversation over to our panelists. And what I'd like for you to do, panelists, and I'll start with Pamela, I'd like for you to describe a little bit about your business, a little bit about how you started, 
and just let us know what it is that you're doing on the continent. I have a series of questions that I will ask, but I'd like the panelists to have an opportunity and for the audience to hear from our outstanding and very impressive women entrepreneurs on the African continent. And again, we are all across the continent today, Zimbabwe and Senegal. So we are very, very happy that we are able to provide a very, very robust and holistic view to our project. So Pamela, I now turn it over to you. Your mic is on mute, so be sure to take it off of mute before you begin. Uh, Pamela Kapakele from Angueru Solar Services. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm so happy and grateful to be here to talk to everyone. And uh, thank you everyone who is listening in. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, if you are in this part of the world. Um, my name is Pamela Mtale Kapekele from Ngweru Solar Services. I'm joining you from Livingstone. Ngweru is an energy company. We use the sun to help people generate electricity. Um, I joined our, the first group in the third co-host uh, in Lusaka. It was meant for Lusaka people, but I kind of get crushed from Southern province because I couldn't miss the opportunity. It was just too great. So I joined in and uh, went through the process, learned a lot. I started in Gweru in 2015. I registered it with uh, the government agency, PACRA. And then after that, I didn't know what to do with it. So it was a baby that died at birth for two years, and but its ghost kept on haunting me. So when I joined the, the academy, I kind of resurrected it. And in 2019, it, the, the, the ghost came alive. It was resurrected. It's now a company employing people and providing uh, electricity to the people in Southern Zambia. And we hope that in the next five years, will go into Zambia's eight neighbors. So that's it about Ngweru Sola. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela. Uh, we'd like to hear from Joanna Mbenge, who is the founder and CEO of Judy Map in Senegal. And Judy Map is a project that we were very excited about. It is a legal project. And I will step back and allow Joanna Mbenge to describe Judy Map and how she developed that project. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Joanna Meg. I am a um, graduate from USRGF and um, a fellow of AWI in Senegal. Um, my project is about Judimab. It's a legal application to, um, for legal information in Senegal. Okay. Uh, we noticed that in Senegal, there were an and lack of legal education. Um, people have many, many issues with um, administrative procedures and legal stuff. Okay, and we, we um, try to combine technology and law in order to help um, building our democracy and our, our um, nation. Okay, thank you, Joanna. Uh, <clears throat> we also have with us Cecilia Suera. Cecilia, would you give us a few words about your project? Okay, my name is Cecilia. Um, I'm the founder and managing director for GNC Chemicals. It's a company that uh, manufactures and uh, sells detergents include um, things like your dishwashers, your scoring powder. And recently, because of the um, uh, COVID-19, we also started doing uh, sanitizers and uh, disinfecting products. So um, here in Zimbabwe, we, we found a gap in the market when, when uh, Unilever left. I'm sure you stopped manufacturing a couple of created uh, a gap in the market for uh, a lot of players. They are now uh, exporting their products into the country. So we took advantage of that uh, opportunity and uh, we, we are trying to, to grow our business. 
And um, fortunately or unfortunately, COVID-19 has actually been very good to us. <laughs> We've managed to grow our volumes uh, through selling the, um, uh, the sanitizers and uh, disinfecting products. And uh, at times we also get into uh, PPE, like your masks, your uh, spray suits and so on. There are some customers who request that and we, we, we are ready to also supply those. Our company is based in Zimbabwe. And um, I was one of the first graduates for the AWAY program. Uh, we went through the, the program, which I think was very uh, beneficial to me. I had been in the corporate sector for about 17 years. Uh, my profession is marketing. So um, I think being in the corporate sector and being an, an entrepreneur, the, the two different things, uh, it's easier to manage somebody's business than starting your own. So uh, the, the Dream Builder program was actually very good in terms of um, giving us a path into entrepreneurship. Thank you. Thank you, Cecilia. Well, I will give myself a renewed welcome. I, Randy and I worked out my camera problem. Thank you, Randy, so very much. I'm sure you did something. Thank you, ladies, for that introduction. One of the things I'd like to ask you, we are, as you know, celebrating Women's History Month. Monday was International Women's Day. And we spent a lot of time speaking with women who have been trailblazers and are prominent in their fields. I'd like to ask each of you, as women entrepreneurs, what was the single greatest thing that you found helpful in developing your business? I recognize that the grant from ADF was clearly a boost, and I will ask about that as well. But in recognition of Women's History Month, and we have three women here whose projects are very exciting, we are trying to promote the Women's Economic Enhancement and Development agenda here from the United States. And I'm just curious. I really think that these three projects were very, very groundbreaking projects, solar energy, chemicals, and the legal aspect. The legal aspect was one of the pillars that was pursued at great length from our perspective because we recognize that oftentimes, even though laws exist for women to protect their businesses and to protect their inheritances, those laws are sometimes difficult to access, difficult to know and understand, and difficult to have someone carry out those things for you. So uh, Johanna, thank you again for that project. And I, I personally thought it was very, very exciting. So I'd like to know if you could sort of talk a little bit about in the context of Women's History Month, what was most helpful to you in starting your business? And let's start with Cecilia. Cecilia, what do you think? What was really helpful is um, I, um, I had made some initiatives before. Um, I think uh, peanut uh, making business, it failed. Then I started a uh, call center business um, where we were supplying call center software. I think we just dealt with one or two customers. Uh, then it also failed. And uh, I thought the reason was probably because um, uh, those were probably not my, my passion. Uh, I have uh, a lot of experience in manufacturing and uh, my passion is manufacturing. The peanut butter business failed because I think we started it on the wrong footing. So I've always wanted to, 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 to set up a manufacturing company. Uh, the products, I was not so sure. So the experience that I then gained um, when I was working in the corporate world, it, it actually helped me in terms of uh, setting up a business. And my last job actually was uh, with a startup company. And um, I, when I joined the company, uh, their volumes were, were, were quite low. And um, I managed to grow that business into um, into regional into uh, regional markets as well. So that experience it 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 gave me the 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 right footing into uh, starting my own business, having experienced a similar company that uh, 
started from nothing and 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 grew to be a quite a, a big business. Oh, thank you, thank you for that response, uh, Pamela. Thank you. Uh, during the Dream Builder program, uh, we were told why a lot of women failed in business and also why some were successful. So I remember the Elma lady, the, 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 the animation, she would talk about um, uh, we, should look, uh, we should look up stories of women who were successful and see what they did that made them successful. So from the program, I, after the program, I started researching about other women in energy, in other, other entrepreneurs, and to learn exactly what they did. And from those women who have done it before, even from their failures and successes, I learned a lot of things. And now I've learned to do things in a certain way so that my business does not fail. So women have been such an inspiration. And my class, we were a class of 30. We are like sisters. Even my first customer came from that team of dream builders. I was introduced to my first customer by a woman who was in my class. So I started appreciating women. Women are powerful and unlimited. Before I used to think women do not support each other. That's a common belief that we have. But from this program, I've learned to network with other women in other countries. And it, it has really helped me to, to change my perspective and to do things in a certain way. And I think that's why my business is succeeding because I've learned both from the failures of other women and from their successes. Thank you. Thank you. Joanna? Um, for me, um, the helpful thing was the motivation that we, we have with this program because um, there were many persons that talking with us um, about Yes, like Pamela said about um, what all the, um, about what many women uh, did in this world, and uh, also I always um, I always say to myself that I have a mission in this world. Okay, and I was wishing for that mission. I was really wishing for that mission. And um, when I, I um, started the program on Dream Builder with the Awi, I really uh, found my mission because yeah, I um, I love my my my, my legal studies. I really um, like helping other with law. And I always talk about love in, 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 in home with my friends and yeah. And I, the most help, 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 helpful thing is that I really found the, a motivation to help others with this, 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 this program. And uh, I wanna notice that it is my first initiative and I, yeah, I think that it will be more successful with the time by the help of the, yeah, the, the grant and the funds. Thank you. Thank you very much. So to synthesize that response or those responses, for Cecilia, it was her past experience and the job that she had and gave her an idea of how to move forward, showed her some of the things that worked and those that didn't work. For Pamela, it was the networking and being able to have the inspiration of other women around you. And for Joanna, it was the mission that she knew she had something and she saw some things that were wrong or needed to be addressed and address them. I'm very happy to hear that throughout all three of those responses, the All Way program and what it provided to you was very, very instrumental in getting you going. Well, you're lucky this morning because we have Manny here. If you had to say one thing to him about what made the All Way program so inspiring to you, and if there was something else that they can add to it, would you say, and these I want to be short answers, ladies, but just, just he's here and I would like to take advantage. He has the unique opportunity to actually speak to an all way graduate who's not only graduated, but successfully submitted an application for follow on funding and has received that funding. So I'd like to know in a short sentence or two, what would you say to him about the all way program that he can take back with him? Jump in. Okay, okay, I'll start. Uh, okay, thank you. 
So for me, uh, it was the, um, the Dream Builder. Uh, I thought uh, that was a very well-structured program, especially for someone who's, um, who has not thought about entrepreneurship, or who has not started uh, a business. That was a, a very good program. Uh, but on the other hand, for somebody who's already in business, I felt um, uh, there was need to, to, to put a little bit more in terms of the practical side. Uh, it was uh, a bit more theoretical. Um, and also the networking part, um, I thought it was going to be good if we could have been networked accessible women who are already in business. Uh, that, that's the opportunity that I was also envying for. Uh, we, like in our country, we've got uh, a lot of those. So maybe if we could have those also featuring uh, in the program, it was going to be uh, more inspirational. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, for, for us in Zambia, we had mentors, women entrepreneurs who were already successful and we met them several times and we, we learned from them. And the Dream Builder program specifically, it's, it's, it's very good. I, I don't think you should change anything really apart from um, maybe localizing some of the content. It's too American society centered. So some of the things are not really practical in, in the African context. Maybe that's the only thing that need to be changed. Okay, Mana. Yes, this is also my point, that's what I wanted to say. Okay. Now, let, let's talk a little bit about the USADF portion of your project and your program. How were you able to make that USADF grant work for you? And what kinds of things did it provide for you with respect to pursuing or growing your business? I ask this question because we have already established that that missing middle is oftentimes the one thing that women entrepreneurs have a great difficulty with. So having had the opportunity to receive those funds, talk a little bit about what that meant to your being able to continue your business. And then after that, Manny, I'd like for you to jump into to sort of talk a little bit about the comments that you heard earlier. Ladies. Okay, let me, I'll start. Uh, for me, the, the grant changed my life like night and day. It, it was just a game changer. Um, right now I'm building a warehouse for Ngweru Solar and I've also procured a utility truck, a three uh, ton truck that is really helping me. And not only that, when we're given the grant, when the, the pictures of our, gradua our graduation were shared uh, by USADF, an African billionaire shared my story specifically, uh, Dr. Strive Musiwa from Zimbabwe. And what just kind of brought attention to my project and I've had so many offers, I just became visible this invisible Pamela suddenly just became so visible to the whole world and shortly after that in December 2020 I was given an award by the Africa Development Bank of $20,000 and that has really helped without this grant I wasn't going to get that visibility so it has really done a lot for me my life has changed I, I think the people who knew me two years ago can't even recognize me now because now I'm more successful and or that um, for me the grant helped me to grow my my business as you know um, I am developing a mobile application to share legal information and to um, educate the population and um, the grant helped me launching the development of this application and its own way um, it is very helpful for me because it um, uh, helped me also have more, um, what can I say, more importance like um, in front of the legal officer, in front of the, 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 the legal sector, 
because you know that it is very complicated to have some partnership um, with public affairs and and so on. And the grant helped me have more um, legitimacy to talk with them and to seek for a partnership. Okay, thank you. Cecilia? Okay, as for me, my business is, um, is a cash hungry business. Uh, our business model here in Zimbabwe, the way it works is you buy raw material on cash basis mm -hmm. and you sell on credit. So it's a, it's a cash hungry business. So for me to be able to put aside some, when, I'm, when I was just starting to also be able to put aside uh, some capital to, to buy equipment, Uh, handy in terms of uh, helping um, uh, expand the business. We managed to uh, uh, procure a truck uh, to do our deliveries and we are also uh, going to procure um, equipment so we can expand our product range. So that, that really uh, helped us and also uh, in terms of the timing, uh, like I said before, our volumes were going up so that uh, was also putting pressure on our capital so that we as many customers as we can. So for us, that's how it it it, it came in handy. We we needed to to capitalize the business, uh, to our fleet, and also uh, procure more equipment. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Manny. Did you want to say anything briefly? Thanks, Mel. I, I just want to say how inspired I am and, and how happy I am to have the opportunity to be here with, with you, with Pamela, Cecilia, and Johanna. You know, from Washington, we, we have designed the Awe program as a framework where many of our U.S. embassies and consulates in Africa are working with local implementing partners to localize the program, to provide enrichment opportunities beyond the Dream Builder course that will help you apply the skills that you're learning into practice. And so I just have to say that, you know, it is really a, a unique opportunity for me to be able to hear from you directly and know that as we embark on implementation in 2021, we'll be taking your feedback into serious consideration on finding creative ways for you to be able to further develop your mentorship relationship, to be able to expand the visibility of your businesses and enterprises, and be able to ultimately succeed as women entrepreneurs. Um, but again, thank you so much for being candid, for being transparent, and for communicating with us in Washington, where we, we really value the ability to connect with you. Thank you, Manny. I am going to turn to our chat room. We do have one question here, and I'm going to allow the, and ask the panelists to answer this question. This question is from a Liz Grossman Kitoyi, founder and CEO of Baobab Consulting. My question is, how can people who do not live in Africa support African women owned businesses? So she's asking, well, how would you, suggest or make some overture toward people who don't live in Africa to support women-owned businesses in Africa? What could they do that would be helpful to you? I think uh, they can join networks of women in business. There are so many. Uh, I know that uh, the WTO has one, I belong to it. Uh, it's called e-commerce. And also there are a lot of other networks like AWEF, uh, anybody can join any woman. This is a global village, so the borders no longer define what we can do. So we can work with anybody, even the USADF. I'm sure they have a large network and they can connect uh, women no matter where they are in the world. Yes, we do. Thank you very much. Cecilia? Okay, Cecilia will have to rejoin. Joanna, any comment on what people who do not live in Africa can do to support African women-owned businesses? Yes, I think that people who do not live in Africa can help by making some publicity, by talking, um, talking about that woman 
thinking about those women um, all around their, their, their landscape okay, in order to, to make them well known in, in the international um, area. Okay. Uh, Cecilia, have you been able to rejoin? Oh, well, I think maybe we have uh, lost Cecilia. Okay, my, 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 one of my good questions that I ask women entrepreneurs, oh, there's Cecilia. Did you have a comment, Cecilia, on the earlier question about how people who do not live in Africa can be helpful in supporting women-owned businesses in Africa? Okay, sorry, my, my network is uh, going up and down. Oh, believe yeah. me, I, I understand if you only knew. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I would think um, exchange programs would also uh, help um, if, um, you know, mo most of the developments, they come from the developed world and uh, most of the ideas, that's where they, they, they also come from. So exchange programs for women in business. exchange programs for women in business. So Mel, maybe I can build on Cecilia's point about exchanges since there are so many flagship programs from the State Department's Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs. I think one of the biggest values, you know, under these difficult circumstances with the pandemic is that many of these exchanges are now being hosted virtually. So that expands further the the opportunity to participate. And I think that um, by looking at ECA's website and other US government partners, there, will, there are plenty of opportunities for you to engage with women entrepreneurs and other business owners, um, ways to engage as, as mentors and leaders to be able to support communities around the world. So I, I would say that there are, there's plenty on, on our website on eca.state.gov and, and to look at other government partners on, on the ability to engage. Thank you very much. And, and my comment to that, just listening to the responses, is we need to investigate if these many bodies, some of which have paid memberships, will make available to some businesses membership without be, having to pay membership dues. And I know that that might sound a little unequal, but I think that that's something that can be for a later conversation, but, but that we can certainly look at. There is another question in the chat room that I had had on my mind and I'm going to read it. How has the COVID-19 pandemic changed your business strategy? And in what ways, if any, did the Allway Network support your business resiliency? We hear an awful lot about digital equity and digital divide. What digital tools have been instrumental to the growth of your business? And in the context of COVID-19, other than the obvious restrictions and movement and so on, I'd like for the each candidate, each participant to sort of respond to the question about how the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted your business. Joanna? Yes, thank you. Um, the COVID-19 for me uh, has a positive impact in my business. Because um, I wanted to connect the law. I want to um, combine technology like digital and law in order to help. And um, it makes me enforce my, my, my strategy. And um, also my AWI um, network in Senegal, look, uh, in Senegal helped me by, um, uh, I helped them legalize their 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 their, their company i helped them formalize their company and they asked me to do that for for them with judima like my first customers are my awi network in, in senegal wonderful wonderful yeah. wonderful pamela how did covid19 impact your business well, it negatively impacted my business at first because i was looking at uh my, my clients, initially, I wanted to save people in remote areas only, but with the coming of COVID, I was forced to think outside that box and take to online spaces. And that's how we came up with our website. 
and it has, it has increased our client base. So we no longer focus just on remote areas. We have customers even outside Zambia now who are approaching us and asking for services. And it has also forced me to partner with other women in other countries like Botswana, I have a partner there. So when I find a client, she services them and then we share the profit. So that there is also a blessing in, in COVID somehow. Okay, thank you. Cecilia? Yeah, for us, uh, like I said, because we're in the business of detergents, uh, the demand uh, went up. So it, it was a, a positive impact for us. But uh, besides that, I think uh, we've had to change the way we were also doing business. Most of our interaction with customers was on a face-to-face -face basis. Uh, we had to change that to start using the online platforms. And uh, that also came to us as a saving because uh, you then don't have to travel to, to visit your customers. You talk to them over the phone, emails and so on. So that also helps, helped us in terms of um, cutting our costs as a business. Um, our product uh, development um, was also enhanced. We had to quickly um, introduce new products, uh, which were in line with the demand that we, that we were experiencing uh, on the ground. Okay, thank you. Well, ladies, M Manny, and the team in Concordia, we are unfortunately coming to the end of our session, drawing it to a close. I am so grateful and so much appreciate hearing from these three grantees. And to these three grantees, you now have, you are in the same sister class. So you now have someone in Zambia, Zimbabwe, and Senegal. And Johanna, you can rely on, Pamela, if you need some questions answered about solar, and Pamela, you can rely on Cecilia if you need to know about PPE and detergents. You have created a new network that I hope that you will pursue and use. It is my hope that we're able to bring these grantees together so that they do benefit from the network and the very, very exciting experiences and training that they've had through Awe. And Please do know that as ADF grantees, you have become a member of the ADF family as well. So you can call on us if you need assistance, continued application for funding, you have certainly become a part of our family. I want to congratulate the three of you. I want to send my blessings and my best wishes that throughout this pandemic, you and your family remain safe and prosperous. And please know that each of you have my email. You may call on me at any time. Uh, Concordia has now become a part of our network as well. I thank them. I'd like to call on Hannah Dalmut of Concordia to give us some closing remarks. If there's anything that you ladies would like to say very quickly before we close, please do that or Manny, but please know that I am very, very grateful for the comments that you have given us. I have learned a little more about how to use ADF to help you. I have learned a little more about the kinds of things that have been impactful for you. And as we move forward beyond just March as International Women's Month, as we move forward with our agenda for women economic development and enhancement, please know that we are soldiers on the same side. So Manny and Hannah, I will turn it over to you. Just to echo your words, Mel, we're so excited at the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs to continue expanding the Awe program on the continent. And I know that uh, both in Zambia, Senegal and Zimbabwe, we have three incredible women leaders here, and I hope that you'll engage with the next cohort of women participating in the program in 2021. I extend to you my, my, my greatest, greatest, greatest enthusiasm and energy as you continue growing and expanding your business. And thanks again for allowing me to share the stage with you today. Thank you, Manny. Hannah? Um, before I go, I, I know that there was the opportunity for Pamela, Joanna, or Cecilia to chime in, um, and I don't want to take that opportunity away. So if there's any final words. 
for me, I just want to say thank you so much for this opportunity. And to Manuel, I hope that uh, the program rolls out to the rest of the country, not just in Lusaka. <laughs> Zambia is bigger than Lusaka. And uh, to you, Melvinia, thank you so much, USADF family, and my three new sisters, I'll definitely keep in touch with you. Thank you so much. Joanna, Cecilia, any last words? Um, thank you also. Thank you um, for all this opportunity. Thank you for allowing me to share my experience. Thank you to, yeah, thank you for all, seriously. And um, I'm very glad to have three new sisters. And um, as Pamela said, we will keep in touch. And I hope that we will um, have, why not, some business together. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Celia? Okay, yeah. I also want to say uh, thank you to USAIDF for such a great program and uh, to AWE. Um, I think uh, there are a lot of women who are earning for, for this opportunity. Um, for us, I think it's to be the first uh, uh, for this group. So we, we just want to thank you and we hope uh, you're going to continue um, with uh, what you've started and also um, helping other women who are in business or who want to start uh, their businesses. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. Well, thank you all. Um, some favorite moments for me in today's conversation um, definitely include the idea of gate crashing, right? If, if you want to be at that table and that table's not in your backyard, you got to go to it. So um, kudos to, to taking that panel up. But knowing your expertise and passion and then also pivoting when, um, when business ideas or global pandemics disrupt what you want to do. So the resiliency that you each exhibit in your industries is, is fantastic. I want to thank all of our panelists for their insights. Um, for our audience, Anybody who's running accelerators, um, our US ADF and AWE um, partners on this call, I hope we all learned just the necessity of co-collaboration and co-creation throughout the entirety of a project and just how important it is to ensure that content and networks is localized. This is such a, an important um, piece of information that was shared with all of us and we all you know, can always get better at that. Um, so great, great piece of recommendation for future projects. Um, and so Concordia will continue this conversation throughout the year to include at our 2021 Concordia Annual Summit, which will be a hybrid event, um, knock on all the wood and <laughs> everyone wear a mask. Um, so if you want something actionable for today, however, there are a few immediate steps I could recommend. First, um, we're currently accepting applications for the P3 Impact Award. So if you're part of a cross-sector collaboration that's uh, contributing to the space of um, empowering or investing or shaping the entrepreneurial ecosystem, I encourage you to apply for that award um, through April 12th. Um, and, and hopefully um, be a part of that process. Um, so this award recognizes excellence in public-private partnerships, and it's something we do at Concordia alongside the U.S. Department of State and the uh, University of Virginia Darden School of Business. More information about that is on our website. A second immediate action item um, prompted by Liz and her great question is to check out each of these businesses, check out other female-owned businesses, um, and support them and the networks that they're a part of. And finally, um, hopefully in the Spot Me chat feature, there's the link to the Lagos Partnership Accelerator that I referenced at the top of this call. If you're interested in learning more about this subject and the conversations Concordia has hosted in the past, please check out that report. I found it to be incredibly insightful. That entire day in, um, in Lagos was just so um, incredibly informative. And I just wanna say thank you again to everybody who participated in that forum and, and shared their work with us. So thanks to Milvena and to our panelists, a special thanks to US ADF and the State Department and all AWE partners for all of the great work they're doing in this space in African countries and to our audience for joining in and being a part of today. Follow us on social media at Concordia Summit and stay tuned for future events. Have a really fantastic evening, afternoon or morning, depending on where you are and we'll be in touch. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, thank you.